Good morning, I'm Sue Resig, and today we're making my favorite dish. This is something that I just created a couple weeks ago and I can't get enough of it. And it's a red cabbage sauerkraut, and I'm calling it sauerkraut, but it's technically not. It doesn't have any salt in it, but it's so sweet and tangy and it's just so good on everything. So I wanted to share it with you. And I know there's people out there who don't like cabbage. You're gonna have to trust me on this one. It's really good, it's kind of like a pickle. And it really adds a lot of flavor to whatever we're eating. I find it's good as a topping on potatoes or just throw it over some vegetables. It just adds flavor to what I'm eating. So I want to show you how to make it and just how easy it is. And it's very easy. I start with a nice big head of red cabbage. And you can use the whole head. In this case, I am only going to use part of it because I want part of this head of cabbage for doing uh, green drinks this week. We're out of town. We're visiting in the Adirondacks of New York State, which is a beautiful mountainous area with lakes and trees and streams and wildlife. And we're just really fortunate to be up here this week. So this is a guest kitchen that I get to work in. And I always travel with my apron. You know me. So here I've cut off a part and actually that's going to make it a little easier for cutting. It gives me a stable edge to rest it on. And I'm going to start cutting as thinly as possible. If uh, you have a hard time with this, if you want to put it through a food processor, you can. I just shave it as thin as I can. It doesn't take too long. I just keep trimming down through. And what helps is that I have a very sharp knife and it makes it possible for me to cut such nice thin cuts. And what I want you to know, I got this idea for a recipe online. I saw someone else had said making Brussels sprouts and and they were doing them in a crock pot and they had shaved the Brussels, Brussels sprouts very thinly and they had used maple syrup and vinegar and I don't know, they'd used some other things in there. But I thought, huh, I, I, that sounds good. Oh, you know, they'd put bacon in, of course, but we're not doing that. But it just sounded like a really good recipe. And I went to the store and we don't have Brussels sprouts available yet. They're not in season here. So I knew I'd have to wait another month or two for Brussels sprouts, but I couldn't wait to try the recipe. So what's a Brussels sprout? Brussels sprouts, just a little teeny tiny cabbage. So I went and got a big cabbage and said, I can try this. Now what I want you to know is that there's a whole family of vegetables out there that are very similar. There are, it's, it's cabbage, you know, we've got our green cabbage, our red cabbage, Brussels sprouts. Other vegetables that are related are broccoli and cauliflower and kohlrabi, actually kale and uh, collard greens are, are of the same family. And I have found that a lot of those vegetables can be interchanged in recipes. So say you have a recipe that you really like to put broccoli in, try substituting cauliflower or substituting kale or cabbage. You know, any recipe that you have of one of those, you can try making it with one of the other vegetables and it would give you more variety. And you know, it's really important in Gerson to have variety. We have so many things we have to eat, but you know with every meal, lunch and dinner, we're gonna have a cooked vegetable. That's a place where you can really have some fun and give yourself some variety in what you're eating. Because that variety is important for getting us more added nutrients. The, um, the vegetables from this family are, are very good for detoxing. Um, I do know in Gerson they say to be a little bit cautious on your, your cabbage because it can be gas producing. Try a little bit at first and see how you handle it. Um, I don't have any problem with it now. You know, I've been doing Gerson for 18 months and uh, things are, are going very well. And I'm able to eat a lot of different foods and I just love adding these vegetables in. In fact, I'll, I'll treat it like a pickle and just add it as a side on many of my meals or like a condiment. And uh, it's, it's very good. Very good to have it that way. You can see I'm making short work of this cabbage. It's, it's cutting up very nicely. And we're going to have a huge pile. I'm glad I'm only doing half of it. But that's okay. I'll be eating it all week. All right, we can put that into our crock pot. 
actually, now what I'm using, I have, it's called an instant pot. It's a different kind of crock pot or slow cooker, I should call it. It's actually a, also a pressure cooker. And this is just the liner that came out of it. And the reason why I use this is because it's stainless steel liner. Um, a lot of slow cookers out there use the crock inside, the pottery. And you have to double check with that company because uh, there's been found to be lead in the liners of many of those crock pots and slow cookers. And we don't want to take a chance and be getting lead in our food. So I uh, went out and I, I purchased this with the intention of using it as a pressure cooker. And since we don't use pressure cookers in Gerson, um, I don't use it as the pressure cooker part. I use it as the slow cooker. It's a very nice um, product. I really do enjoy it. I use it almost every day for something. It's very nice for the slow cooking aspect, but it also, it has many different features. You can make yogurt in it. It's a yogurt setting. You can make your oatmeal in it. It has a porridge setting. It has a rice setting, um, which you can also do quinoa in there if you wanted, or rice. Um, I, I tried making the Gerson soup in it, the hippo soup. That didn't, I didn't like it in there. It just didn't, it needs to come up to temperature faster and then down to simmer. And this can't bring it up to temperature fast. And it just changed the flavor of it too much. And I've talked to someone else and they had the same experience. We agree, uh, the hippo soup tastes much better on the stove. So I wouldn't do that in there. But it makes it, oh, I make a, a delicious spaghetti sauce in that. Well, spaghetti squash sauce. And uh, it's just very good. Okay, we're getting down to the end of this cabbage. Isn't that pretty? I love looking at the colors and the designs in that. That could be a quilt design right there. I'm a quilter too, so everything crosses over. Okay, I think that's good enough. We've got everything. We're going to have a nice big pot full. Now, I have found that if I if I had less cabbage, that was a big head of cabbage, if I had a small head of cabbage, and this is a, at least halfway full, if not more, it's like three quarters full. If this was half a pot, I don't need as much uh, dressing to put over it. You know, you, you have to accommodate for how much you have, so you'll have to think. Now, I wanna show you something, because I know a lot of people um, have asked the question, there's recipes sometimes that you hear, they talk, refer to parts, one part and two parts and three parts, as opposed to half a cup or tablespoon or ounces. So what do parts mean? Parts mean units. So if something calls for one part and two parts, this would be a part. So let's say one part oil, two parts sugar, that would be you know, one scoop of this and two scoops of the sugar. Or it could be one part this, means you use it once, and then two parts something, you use it twice to measure. You could use this once for one part and use it twice for two parts. That's what parts means. It means whatever unit of measure. So if in the case of one and two, you know you're gonna have twice as much of one ingredient to the first ingredient. I hope that's making sense. But that's what I'm going to do for this so you can see how that works. This is maple syrup. And I'm going to use one part maple syrup. But in this case, this measurement is a third of a cup. If you don't have maple syrup to use, you could use honey. I like the flavor the maple gives it. You don't taste maple later, you just taste good. What this makes is a sweet and tangy uh, cabbage when you're done. And then I'm going to use two parts apple cider vinegar, and this is an organic apple cider vinegar. I do wanna try this recipe with some other vegetables, but I have to confess, I like this one so well, I haven't wanted to do any other ones. It just tastes so good, and it's a good way to get cabbage in. Isn't that pretty, though? Now I'm just going to stir it up a little bit. Well, that's not working. Let's try this. I'm just 
make sure everything's coated. See how it glistens? There, that's good. Now, with a big full pot like this, that, that quantity I think was a good amount for the full pot. So it was, in this case, it was two thirds of a cup of apple cider vinegar and one third cup maple syrup. Mmm, it tastes good. Just a little bit tangy, a little bit sweet. You can barely taste it, but it's just enough. And what we'll do is I'm actually going to cook this on high in my crock pot, in my cooker, slow cooker, for three hours because it's such a full pot. If it was not so full, it would probably be done in two. But having made this a few times, I know. There we go. I don't want it to build any pressure, so I have it set to let that off. I'm going to set it on slow cook. And I have it on high temperature. Oops, I want to set my time for three hours. Now I can open this up and check it, and I will after about an hour and a half to two hours. I will open it, give it a nice stir, make sure everything's still all coated. And then, uh, then I can judge how much longer I want it to cook. You may like it a little more crunchy, in which case maybe it's done in two hours for you. Um, I've done it both ways. I like it a little bit crunchy, but then I like it soft too. So uh, today I think I'm going to go for a soft cook, and that would be the full three hours. But we'll take a peek around an hour and a half too and come see how it looks, okay? Thank you. It's been two hours. I thought we'd take a check of how the cabbage is coming along. If I had started with a half full pot, this probably would have been done by now. But it was such a full pot that I'm sure it'll take the full three hours. It's looking very good. You know, it's, it is cooked enough. You could eat it now if you wanted. I just want a softer cabbage today. So that looks very very good. Let's try a little little bite here and see what's going on. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. That's tasty. I wish I'd put just a little more dressing on it. It tasted mild when I put it in. But I can always put a little bit more on it after it cooks. It tastes good. Okay. Going to give it until it's done. We'll give it the rest of the hour and see how it goes. Thanks. Well, our three hours is up. We actually got a couple minutes over. And that looks very good. And I will let you know that I did end up stirring it one more time since I showed you. And that looks lovely. Doesn't that look good? So I'm going to show you some ways of serving this now. I've got a plate, I've got a half a potato, and this is what I love to do. I'll take it right out of the pot and put it over my potato. Sometimes I'm just so anxious to eat it, I'll take two potato halves and put it inside and eat it like a sandwich. So that's good. I just pile it over and eat it that way on top of my potato as a topping. You can put on top. That's a boiled potato because that's what I had, but you could also use a baked potato. And I have some other things sitting here, and I'm going to scoop up some of this cabbage. And I'm going to make a nice cabbage salad with this. Uh, actually, it's called a sauerkraut salad. I posted it online the other night for sauerkraut salad. Take that sauerkraut. This is my favorite diced red onion and diced yellow pepper. It doesn't have to be yellow pepper. I just happen to have some on hand. So that's what I use. You could use green or red or orange. All sweet peppers, of course, because that's what we're allowed. And typically a dressing for this would have, a dressing for this would have oil and vinegar and sugar. Well, we already have our vinegar and our sugar in there because of how we cook the cabbage. It doesn't need oil. We don't need to add any oil to this. It's fine just the way it is. I'm just going to stir this all together. And the nice tanginess of the cabbage will 
get into the other vegetables. You could add a little diced celery to that if you want for a little more crunch. And then I refrigerate this and chill it and we can serve it later. Maybe we'll have this for dinner tonight then. And that's, that makes a lovely salad that way. And look how easy that was. So we've got sauerkraut salad, we've got sauerkraut for potato topping, and, and that's it for our yummy sauerkraut tangy condiment. It's a, it's a vegetable, but it's also a condiment, and this adds a lot of flavor. Whenever you're eating something and you think, man, I wish I just had a little more flavor, you can put a little bit of this on. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you.